your documentary, Scene One, Take One. Hi, my name is Alyssa Chavez, and I am a senior at Tri County High School. I live in a really small town called Howard City, which is in Michigan. There isn't a lot to do here, but there is a record store and a music shop. But besides that, there's fields, some houses, and our high school. I learned a lot about myself in this past year. I learned about who my real friends are. I learned what kind of music I like, and I've learned that I really love filmmaking. From screenplay writing, to directing, to just filmmaking overall. With a love-hate relationship with video editing. I wanted to combine both of the things that are really important to me at this point in my life, which are school and film. And I narrowed it down to making a film about seniors in high school. What their life is like right now, and what they plan to have their life be like after graduation. I picked eight seniors and asked if they would like to be in my film. All of them said yes. Let's meet them, shall we? What's up, y'all? I'm Maddie Huntoon, and I'm a senior at Cedar Springs High School. Hi, my name is Skylar Zelko, and I'm a senior at Tri-County. Hi, my name is Katya Poro, and I am a senior at Cedar Springs High School. Hello, I'm Zane Zazula. I'm a senior at Tri-County. Hi, I'm Macy Huntoon, and I'm a senior at Cedar Springs High School. Hi, I'm Anthony Sowers. I'm a senior at Tri-County High School. Hi, I'm Austin Kibbe. I'm a senior at Cedar Springs High School. Hi, I'm Brianna Willison, and I'm a senior at Track County High School. Each person in this documentary is reflecting ideas and opinions about themselves, about high school, and about college. It was very important to me that they are honest and comfortable with their answers. That way, I'm able to give the best perspective on both being a senior in high school and about as an upcoming adult going into the real world. After high school, my career goal is to either direct or star in films. My career goal after high school, I want to be a college professor. I plan to get my doctorate and teach at a really nice university. Or I'm not sure what my career goal after high school is because all I really know is that I want to study history. I haven't really decided if I'm going to teach it or maybe become a historian. So I'm just not sure yet. Uh, after high school, my career goal is to go into biology or some other science. Uh, my goal for a career after high school is to work as a fashion designer and to make pretty clothing. My career goal after high school is either to go into flight sciences or broadcasting and journalism. Uh, so my career goal is I would like to be a uh, cinematographer for a company. I'm not really sure what company yet, just that's my goal is to use my photography and cinematography skills to, uh, I don't know, influence a big company someday. At this point in time, I'm not entirely sure what I want to do after high school. I've been kind of toying around with the idea of going to college to become a high school English teacher, but I've also been thinking about going into photojournalism or something with multimedia, so I'm just going to figure out as I go. Well, when choosing the career goal of film, you have to look back at high school. When I came into high school, I looked at theater and film and everything as a big joke. I didn't care for it. I was all, mm, I'm going to go play football. But then I met the theater teacher, H, and he really transformed my life. He opened me up to this new way of thinking, these new ideas, and I was instantly in love. Then sophomore year when I took TV Pro, I knew this was exactly what I wanted to do. There was no rationale behind it. I just got in there and I was instantly in love with everything that had to do with it. I chose to go into flight sciences because uh, I'm obsessed with planes. <laughs> and I chose broadcasting and journalism because I've always had a love for film and production. I chose history as my major just because it's been the thing that really excites me the most through my high school career. Um, I've always been interested in history and I just can't really see myself going to college for anything else because history is really the only thing I can keep my attention focused on. I chose to go into science because even as a child I really loved science and how the world works and just learning about the human body and the wildlife and just everything about it so I thought biology would be a really good fit for me. Yeah, so I see myself doing this for like the rest of my life. I'm that's like the main like career goal that I have, but I kind of want to weave in and out of 
like different careers like for instance cinematography and videography is like my main goal but I also would like to get into like uh, design making, um, logo making, apparel making, like I just want to get into all different types of things so yeah I do see myself in cinematography until I retire but again that's not going to be what I'm going to be doing my whole life. So I'm not going to lie with pretty much all my options I'm not sure I'm going to get paid a lot so I'm a little bit worried about making ends meet but I think it's going to be doable no matter what so I'll get through it when I get there. I don't really foresee myself doing it up until retirement uh, due to the fact that it's not really going to be a high money making job and I want to prepare for retirement. Uh, but I will definitely do it for as long as I can because I enjoy it. Yeah, I could see myself doing this throughout my whole life, mainly because I could do things how I wanted to do them. I could run a classroom how I wanted to run it and I could make it fun for my students. I don't want to be a teacher that everybody hates seeing. So yeah, I think I could make some fun out of it. I think one challenging thing about flight is definitely the work that you have to put into it since obviously learning to fly a plane is kind of a difficult career. And I think with broadcasting journalism, one of the hardships I probably will face is just the competitiveness, competitiveness of the industry is going to be difficult to overcome. Right now my greatest hardship is financially trying to get my hands on like a computer or a laptop so I can start cranking this stuff out on my own and get my own personal content out there. But in the future I can see my biggest uh, hardship being trying to just get recognized and not looked at as a joke. One hardship I'm going to have to face is just deciding exactly what to do in science because it's such a big range of careers that you can go into and I am a very indecisive person and I also get really bored really easily so I need to find something that will keep me interested but also be a good career that provides for my future. So I think there's going to be all types of uh, hardships like for instance cinematography is not going to be the same until I'm 60, 70 years old and I retire. I'm going to have to keep learning new skills and I'm going to have to keep finding different ways to record and all sorts of things. So of course I'm going to have to kind of change as time, as time flies by. The best school for aviation and flight is definitely Western Michigan University for me and the best school for broadcasting and journalism and communications is Central Michigan University. Right now, my best choice for film will be going to CMU. They have an opportunity with a scholarship there that I'm really looking into. It could be a full tuition, it would be really nice. And they have one of the best, pro best programs not only in Michigan, but in the entire country in broadcasting and cinematic arts. And that's exactly what I want to look into. The school I'm choosing to go to is Western Michigan University. So the school I think that's going to be the best for me as of right now is uh, Davenport. They have a very good um, marketing program which is kind of where I want to aim my uh, cinematography towards. I want to kind of learn how to use and apply my uh, video skills to a marketing industry. So I think that's the best choice for me. It's local, it's in Grand Rapids. I love the city of Grand Rapids. Uh, that's kind of where I want to be based out of. So I think as of right now that is the best school for me. So I've already been accepted to Grand Valley State University and I really think that's probably the best option for me right now just because they have a really good all-around coverage and I think that no matter what I go into they'll have something for me there so that's probably where I'm going to go. Uh, right now I'm having a hard time finding a school to go to due to uh, pressures from family and friends and uh, my girlfriend to be able to get uh, into a college that's more near home rather than going out of state like I planned on doing because I was originally going to go to Columbus College of Art and Design in Columbus, Ohio because they have a good um, scholarship program and being out of state I would be able to get a higher scholarship uh, rather than going to a school in state. and. On top of that, it's going to be difficult finding housing during uh, college for that, and 
I'm going to have to keep a job steady for that, and it's going to be a lot of work. Um, the school that I think would be best for me is Grand Valley State University. I visited about a month ago, and I really liked it there. The teachers gave me a really clear path that I can take, and they seemed to know what they were talking about. And I think I'd really like it there. I think it'd be good for me. So for the longest time, I was pretty set on going to Ferris and maybe Northern, just because I knew I could get into those schools. I knew my credits would transfer to Ferris. But recently, I've been dedicating all my energy to applying to the University of Michigan, because they sent me a letter that I qualified for the Hale Scholarship. Basically means if I get accepted, I go there for like free tuition. So that would be really awesome if that happened. So that's my number one pick right now. Other than that, I don't know. No matter what school I end up going to, I know that in the field it's going to be a lot of uh, interesting people to meet and it's going to be learning a lot of skills that I previously not have ever even thought about learning, like um, being able to differentiate between fabrics and what they're made of with just like looking at them and stuff like that. So I went and toured GDSU and I really like the campus so I think that it'll just be fun there no matter what. Plus they have a good English program so if I do go into the English education system then I'm set. And they have a good media program too I believe so either way I'm probably going to just do everything there. The best thing about attending U of M, if I get in, is just that the weight that the degree from U of M carries, the like huge alumni. Um, I have visited there several times, and the campus is really nice, the atmosphere is really nice. So I think, you know, you get the same uh, college experience there that you could get anywhere else. Just the trouble is that it's hard to get in, and it's really expensive. Um, some positives. Um, there are a lot of English programs there, like different ones for different um, topics, I guess you could say. Like there's English literature and then there's um, English, like learning parts of the language in general. And then there's English for Education, which is where I would go. And there's just so many different fields that I could take and people that I could talk to to help me further understand what I'm going to be doing with my life. A downside to attending both Western and Central is obviously the cost because going to a four-year university is expensive. Right now the biggest negative for me when it comes to going to college is cost. It's really, really expensive and very hard for me to afford it, especially because I'm having troubles with FAFSA. So I'm really just banking on a nice scholarship to help get you through there. One negative of attending there that may not be a negative to all people, but to my mother, is that it's a pretty big party school, so there's a lot of opportunities for me to get off track, which I don't think I'll have to worry about, but it's always a, a threat. <laughs> so one of the negatives for me is going to be price. Uh, I don't have really any money saved up, if I'm being honest, which I know I can get over, eventually I'll be able to pay it off just right at the beginning. Price is going to be a big deal for me. And really, I think that's going to be about it. Maybe uh, showing up to class on time might be, a, might be something I have to overcome. It might be a negative at first, but I think I'll be able to get over it. Yeah, I think I will change socially, hopefully for the better. Um, I will be staying on campus, so I will have roommates, and I think that will be good for me. We can do stuff together, and I'll have um, friends right away when I go, which will be awesome. And I hope to get involved with some sort of clubs and sports, maybe, I don't know, just to get out there more. <laughs> Oh, the biggest social change I'll have in college is that I will not be anywhere near as outgoing my first year because I'm like comfortable with everyone at my high school right now and I will know no one there so I won't be going into this big social butterfly that I am right now. Everyone will probably think I'm like super weird once they get to know me. I'm pretty sure that after high school I'm going to become kind of a recluse <laughs> due to the fact that I'm already difficult to talk to because I'm I hardly ever respond to anything, 
and uh, I think after school without being able to see the person 24-7, I'm just going to get even worse. I think one way that I'm going to change socially in college is going to be that I will be more outgoing. I think I am pretty outgoing as is now, but considering that I'll be in a completely new environment with new people, it's going to kind of force me to become more outgoing and able to talk to people. In all honesty, at the beginning of college, mentally, I'm probably going to go downhill because I'm going to be scared and alone and frightened and then if things will get better and I'll get mentally stronger because of the education, but it's going to be a roller coaster. <laughs> so just like changing socially, I think that everyone is going to change mentally, you know, whether that be making sure that you're showing up to class on time or making sure that you have good grades. I think college really beats that into you that, you know, you need to get stuff done. You can't just blow it off like high school. So yeah, I think that everyone for the most part changes positively uh, mentally. So yeah. So I think it's definitely going to be a bit of a challenge when I, go to, when I go to college because I'm not really used to being on my own at this point and so that'll be a little bit of a change but I don't think it's anything I couldn't overcome. In college I definitely don't expect to get the same grades I got in high school. Most of the time in high school I barely even try and I normally only try just when it starts to slip. Um, but I'm okay with not getting like A's or maybe not even B's, you know, in some classes. But I think I'll still, you know, I'll stay afloat. I can be a good student when I want to, and I, I think I'll settle in, in a nice rhythm there. So academically, when I go to college, I'm hoping that I'll be able to continue to take care of my grades and make sure I don't put them above my health, but still you know, do well in school. Uh, if I change academically, it's probably going to be for the better due to the fact that it's going to be switching into a new school and whenever I do stuff like that, like uh, switching into a new school or grade, I always get my prior priorities straight at the beginning of the school year and I can keep myself on track in order to graduate when I need to. Um, and I'll be better organized in day-to-day -day events and life itself. I think I will increase academically. Um, going to school for eight years is definitely going to help me be smarter and learn more. Um, not even just school smarts, but just how to be on my own and how to take care of myself because I won't be staying at home. I'll be staying on my own and I think that will help me. My goals this year academically are to focus a lot harder and get my grades up in the classes I love like choir, theater, and CSTV, as well as getting a much larger portfolio because overall I, I have a lot but I don't think it's my best work yet so I want to put forth all my effort into getting the best that I can so that I look really nice to colleges. This year I want to just try to do a lot of new things and pack as much as I can into my last year of high school because the first couple years of high school I didn't really do a lot, and now I'm scrambling to get everything in at once, so. Since it's my last year of high school, I want to be voted best dressed, biggest flirt, or most likely to marry rich in mock elections. All right, so some of my goals are, uh, uh, first of all, I'd like to make a video on this year about high school somehow, whether it be a documentary or a cinematographic video. Um, you know, I just like to make a video. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Another goal of mine is to Let's just say get a good time in the 400 this track season. Uh, that's like my main event, and I'm not going to say that exact time, but uh, I'd like to get a good time. And another uh, goal I have is to, well, one other goal I had was to make it to the Davenport, and luckily I've been accepted this year. I just found out like last weekend. So that's one out of my three goals, and just have two more to beat. I deserve to be awarded these elections because obviously I am the biggest flirt who is going to marry Rich and I'm the best dressed. So far I have done something almost every day after school. I'm always doing things and I kind of feel like I can't catch my breath, but I kind of love it. This is how I'm going to have to live to make sure I cram everything in this last year. I'm doing fantastic at maintaining this goal. Right now I think I'm putting in my best work ever. 
I'm writing a script right now for a superhero film that I'm really excited about, and I think it will turn out great. I've been going live a lot more often. I was in a, sh I was like in a show, like an actual play, which I've always just been in the back doing tech, and I've finally gotten out there. I got a one at to, uh, musical theater solo and ensemble one Saturday. It was like last Saturday, but I think that overall this year I've been putting in all the work I can, and it's been really paying off. The thing I'll miss most about high school is definitely the people, even the people I don't like. Just uh, going to the same place for your whole life definitely, you know, sets you in a, a an area of familiarity and comfort, and it's scary thinking about going someplace else, especially somewhere far away. Um, I'm really going to miss the people the most. I have a lot of friends in high school, and I have a lot of teachers that I really like, mentors almost, and it's going to be hard to say goodbye to all of them because I know I'll never see all of them again at the same time, and I think that's going to be kind of sad. I think I'm really going to miss so much about high school. I know I'm going to miss my friends, and I'm, I'm really going to miss the classes. I really enjoyed it. And I'll definitely miss the teachers and the good times and like all the events like the dances and football games. But you know, you can't really focus on that right now. I'm just focusing on having a good time while I still can do those things. Um, I'm gonna miss the teachers the most out of anybody at the school due to the long lasting impression that they made on me because I know just about every teacher in the school after four years and I've had almost all of them. And them being there and teaching me the skills that I'm going to need in college and in life after is extremely important and a lot of them I'd say have become more friends rather than teachers. What I will not miss about high school is all of the petty drama that occurs pretty much on the daily with everyone since we are all, are all teenagers and annoying. Uh, things I'm not going to miss about high school, uh, probably the food, uh, the water issues that we've been having, um, people constantly thinking that they uh, need to be better than others. It's just a, an extremely toxic environment in high school and I can't wait to get out of it. <laughs> I'm not going to miss the, the pressure of high school. of the fitting in and even though I like to think that I'm kind of unique, I still am one of those people that just wants to fit in and wants to be accepted socially. So I'm going to really like to thrive in having no boundaries and not caring what other people think as much. Uh, so I'm not going to miss a lot of things about high school. Uh, I'm not going to miss, you know, having to go to the same class every single day. And while I like routine, it just gets kind of boring, you know, because I feel like I've been taking the same classes every year for the past four years. Uh, I'm not going to miss things like constant SAT testing and just all that other high school junk and I'm definitely not going to miss having to come here and uh, deal with freshmen even though people just say like that's not an actual thing. It definitely is an actual thing. Freshmen can be some of the most annoying people. So uh, yeah, those are just a couple of things I'm not going to miss. The thing I'll definitely miss the least about high school is how I was treated for most of it, as well as the busy work that I was given most of the time. Really, I felt like I was just doing a bunch of work that was never going to amount to anything that would help me. If there was one thing that I could change about uh, my experience in high school, it would be, I just wish I would have cherished the little moments a little more because I really don't remember a lot of my first couple years of high school because I just kind of skated by and was kind of in the shadows. So I definitely wish I would have kind of come out into my own a little bit sooner than I already did. The things I wish I could change about my past, uh, especially recent years, uh, is kind of my approach to my education. In middle school, I really uh, stressed over my grades a lot, a lot. And I got really good grades. Sometimes I didn't, and I just thought it was the end of the world. I wish I kind of realized now that, you know, as long as you're learning something is really the important thing. And then, also recently, I started working out, like, freshman year, and I lost a lot of weight. I wish I had convinced myself to do that sooner, just because now it's a part of my life that if I dropped it now, it would just totally mess up my routine. 
Um, I really wish that I wouldn't have stressed out about so many little things. I really let the small stuff get to me a lot and that affected my performance in high school sometimes and it affected friendships at one point or another and I really just wish I could have relaxed and enjoyed where I was at and what I was doing at the time. So there's a lot of things I wish I could have changed earlier in high school. Uh, one of the things I did change, uh, which I'm really happy about, is that I didn't. I don't really care about like what other people think as much. I know that freshman and sophomore year I definitely did, and I did certain things and just acted a certain way because I wanted other people to think that I was cool. And I feel like towards the end of junior year is when I finally caught on to that. And definitely into senior year, I now like I, I do care what people think, but that's not going to change me from being who I am. I never thought that cinematography was cool, and I was always kind of shy about that. But now I'm out here making t-shirts for my brand, I guess you want to call it. Uh, I'm out here trying to make videos. I'm texting people almost daily, trying to see if they want to take pictures. I'm just being myself, and I'm really happy that I changed that for the better. Some of the biggest things I'd like to see change in education revolve around like what's being taught and how it's taught. Um, standardized testing and like Common Core is like, it serves a purpose, but I, I think there should be like maybe more optional electives for students just so students can kind of go their own way with their education and learn what they feel is important. Um, algebra and stuff is like obviously important, but not everybody needs to know how to do sigma no notation and stuff like that. And I wish there was just more, I don't know, assist, maybe programs for, to assist students with dealing with high school, because I think high school students now are just stressed out out of their minds. So maybe just, I don't know, a daily reminder that, you know, this isn't the end of the world sort of thing. Just something that really looks after the mental health of students as well as their academics. Uh, something I think that should be changed about the uh, curriculum and about school in general nowadays is uh, the start and end times of school. Uh, due to having to wake up at 5.30 to make it to school at 7.15 for first hour, I find myself going to bed really early and uh, not being able to get to bed until like 12 o'clock at night. Uh, normally I'll be in bed at 9 and it'll take me three hours to fall asleep uh, because I've got so much going through my head um, and I think that it would help if we started school around 8-ish instead of 7.15 that way it gave us at least another hour and then we got out of school about 3.15. Um, I really would like to see um, some more positive like reinforcement like we get a lot of encouragement in school on things that are coming up you know we get motivation to do well on those things but if it doesn't go the way that they were expecting we really don't get any like good like good job you know and i think we need that i think people need to be um like congratulated even if it doesn't end the way that they were expecting because I think everybody really does do their best. Something that I wish would change within our education is that counselors saying that you have so much time all through sophomore and freshman year but then suddenly junior year it's just everything is all happening at once and I wish that they would give you more resources for things after high school that aren't just college because that's not the only option that's happening after graduation. Uh, so I have many role models actually, but my biggest role model I'd have to say is, again, as cheesy as it sounds, Casey Neistat. Um, Casey Neistat is a YouTuber, he's a vlogger, he's an entrepreneur, and I just like love what he does. He is super creative and he is the definition of not letting anyone get in your way. He is always happy, he doesn't care what anyone thinks, he's always doing stuff for himself to make himself better, to make himself happy. And you know, I just love that. And again, through all this, he uses his uh, cinematography skills, he uses video skills, he uses photography. He, he just does everything that I love. And you know, I couldn't have a better role model than him. 
I think a lot of my role models come from teachers just because those are the people I see every day, those are the adults that I see how their lives have turned out. And the ones that really inspire me are the teachers that are really passionate about what they do. Uh, for example, we have uh, Mr. Jigowski and then Mr. Vree, they're a chemistry slash AP stats uh, teacher and then a biology teacher. And they just really love what they do and that really inspired me to make sure that whatever I choose in life is something that I'm going to be excited about every day because I don't want to be stuck in something that I'm not loving. My biggest role model is probably Ewan McGregor. He's not a very well-known actor, but what he's in has always like changed the way I see things. And looking into his history, he was a lot like me. He was not much of a kid, wasn't like the highest in education, wasn't the most athletic, he wasn't really much, but then he worked harder and harder every day at things like theater and got himself known and made it to the top. I think that my biggest role model throughout high school has actually been my sister because she's always encouraged me to step out of my comfort zone and take care of myself and she's always been there for me so she's definitely the one person that I would put above all others. My parents are the most aware of my plans, and my mom is totally against it. She does not, she's not very supportive of it because she thinks a lot of it's impractical, especially because one of my main goals is like moving across the country, and I get it, she's mom, she doesn't want that, but like, that's what I want to do. And that's the last thing she wants to see me to do is move a thousand miles away and not be able to come home for every little event. Uh, yes, my parents are aware of my career plans in life and they're supportive of them. Um, I think my mom in particular is really excited to see me go out to Grand Valley. Um, she really liked that school. She visited it with me and she thinks it'd be a good place for me. And she works right in that area so she could always see me, which would be awesome. And my dad also thinks that it'd be a good school for me and that being a college professor would be good for me. And um, summer vacations, again, would be awesome. So yeah, I think that they're very supportive. My family has been really supportive on my plans for after high school. Uh, even before that, my plan was to apply to U of M. Uh, they always have suggestions and uh, different takes on it, but they've always stressed that whatever I decide to do, they'll be behind me on it, so that's been really helpful. My parents are very aware of my plans after high school to either attend Western or Central and they're very supportive considering a couple of weeks ago I went to Central to compete for a scholarship and in December I'm doing the same at Western. So they're very supportive of me going to college. Some advice I'd give to someone who doesn't know if they want to go to college after high school or what their plans are is to just don't freak out because it's not the end of the world if you don't go to college right away or if you don't go to college at all. There's plenty of other options in the world that don't include college that you can do. So to anyone with doubts about college, um, I would say that depending on your career choice, you really don't have to go, but if you want to and you just kind of don't know where to go, I would say to go and take some trips down to the colleges you want to go to, even if it's all the way down to University of Michigan or University of Miami. just go and take some trips down there and go see what the campus is like, go sit in some classes and just try and figure it out. And again, if college isn't right for you, then don't go, it's as simple as that. Try and figure out any way you can to get into your career, start as a secretary in a marketing business if that's what you wanna do. Just start as anything and eventually you'll rise up the ranks and you'll get to where you wanna be. It's as simple as that. To people that are having doubts about going to college, I would say, definitely do it. Uh, no matter what anybody tells you about not needing a college degree nowadays to get a good job, it's still something that you're going to want to get because uh, people are going to see that on your resume and they're going to realize, oh wow, you actually want this job. You are you, pre you prepared for it and you trained for it and that's why they will give you the job over somebody that never went to college. My advice for someone who's struggling with deciding what to do or what career to go into or what to major in would be just to go to a school and choose like the basic classes. You don't necessarily need to have your major figured out right away. Like I don't even know what I'm doing specifically. And if you change your mind, you can change your mind. People try to make it seem like it's the 
final decision of the rest of your life, but it's really not. People change their mind when they're in their 40s, so you can change it when you're 19. I'm really, really excited for life after high school just because I think that college will be a place where I can thrive a little bit more than I did in high school, and I'm just excited to be somewhere new. The thing I am excited the most for after college is also what I'm probably the most scared of, which is being on my own. It is a, a scary prospect, but I'm looking forward to being on my own and being to make my own decisions, you know, from the tiny things like where I go to eat that night, if I get to eat that night, and just how I tackle my academics and social life, stuff like that. Um, I'm pretty excited for life after high school. I think it'll be hard to say goodbye, but once I do, I really hope to flourish on my own and be a good person and have fun. I really want to go out and have fun, you know, and meet new people and experience new things. I am super pumped for life after high school because it is just full of uncertainties and I can do whatever I want. No school, woo! On a scale of 1 to 10, I'm a 23 when it comes to being excited about life after high school. My high school career has not been the best. I've had a lot of crappy things happen and I've done a lot of crappy things to other people. So I'm just ready to move on from that and get to the next step. Have a nice fresh start and be able to work at what I want and what I care about. I am extremely excited for life after high school because I won't be stuck around the same group of people for days and weeks on end um, and I can make my own little uh, divot in the world. Uh, so I'm super excited for uh, life after high school, you know, I'm, I've been accepted to this great college, Davenport University. And I'm just like, excited to uh, experience what that's like. I've never really sat in on a college class, and I've never really, of course, been on a college campus and experienced the college life. So I, I can't wait to go through all that and see how that fits me. And, you know, I don't really know what my future is going to be like after college. I mean, I have a rough idea, but I'm, I'm just super excited for that and super excited for all the different things that are going to happen in my life. I'm very excited for life after high school because I get to be more independent and that also means being more responsible for my life and I'm just very excited for college and to just be on my own. I don't think that I could choose a favorite memory from high school because I've spent a lot of time with my friends making really great memories and I don't think that there's just one that I can choose. Uh, one of my favorite high school memories was over the summer when we had the whole gang together and we were shooting these like fireworks at each other. I mean I wasn't, the boys were and I almost got hit but we were running around being crazy hooligans in the middle of the night and it was just a, the, one of the last times we could just chill out and relax and not worry about our futures. Um, I think my favorite memory in high school would be um, homecoming my junior year. I really had a lot of fun, I was really relaxed and I had a good time. I went pretty casual that year, which felt good, and um, I hung out with a lot of my close friends, and it was fun. I didn't go with the date, and I didn't mind at all. It was a good time. I'd say that my favorite memory from high school was last year during marching band season. Uh, we marched in the Red Flannel Parade in Cedar Springs, and we, the, I'm part of the drumline, and we went up to the Big Rapids band while they were playing, uh, the drumline in specific, and they started playing their show, and we started playing uh, our cadences, which are little short songs that we use during parades and uh, during sporting events, and we had basically a drum battle where they played and then we played, and then we tried to outplay each other, and we ended up winning and it was against Big Rapids, which is uh, a much larger band than we are, and we were extremely excited about that. Uh, so a couple memories that I love and I'll cherish forever from high school are, they, they all involve my friends, you know, from uh, the silly things we do, like stealing watermelons and uh, getting in trouble, trouble for a couple days or to locking uh, one of my really good friends in a covered all classroom. You know, we always just had a good time 
and you know whether that was in track, whether that was in the classroom, whether that was outside of school. You know, I'm I'm gonna miss high school a lot and all the little memories I made. Um, uh, so yeah, a lot of times I have thought about not going to college. Um, college is a great thing. Again, you get to pursue what you want to do in your life, but not going to college, you can have the same options. Uh, I want to go into marketing through my college. If I went to another business and I said, like, hey, like, can I be a secretary? Can I do anything so that way I can rise up through the ranks eventually? Almost all of them would honestly say yes and give me a position to where I can better myself and to where I can help myself rise up through the ranks. So you don't need to go to college. Uh, there's a lot of other options and you just got to figure out what's right for you. Uh, I've always thought about going to college ever since I was in middle school. I always assumed that I would go to Fair State University and even though I'm not going there anymore, I, I've always pictured myself ending up in college just because I think it'd be good for me and I think it'd help better me in more ways than one. I've definitely thought about not going to college, just in times when the prospect of it seems like too much. But I've never seriously considered planning to not go to college. I think for, for me especially, it's just kind of inevitable. You're going to end up needing some college education for something. I think the closest I've come to, to that decision really is maybe just going to a small community college somewhere and hopefully getting most of my education for free. But other than that, I've kind of always accepted that I have to at least try college. I have definitely thought about not going to college because it's expensive and very hard for me to like come up with that money and be able to get there. But overall, I've, every single time I've come to the conclusion that, no, that's a stupid idea. I'm not going to get anywhere with what I want to do if I don't go to college. I've never really thought about not going to college because that was always just what was told to me was college after high school and I think that it's important to go to college, especially if you're learning how to fly a plane because that's necessary to learn before you hop in a jet. I know life after graduation is scary, stressful, and everything in between. And it's okay if you don't have all the answers right now. And it's okay to keep figuring out what your plan is going to be after high school. But it's important to remember our dreams, our visions, and to never give up.